Oh, that's recording? Okay, we're looking at 2004 part B relative velocity. It is a tricky question, um, so it's worthwhile going through in detail. The question itself is up here if you want to look at it. That's taken from the exam paper. I've also got the marking scheme which I can refer to to help us with a diagram. So if you want to revise this and you're not sure how to read my writing, at least the writing and the marking scheme are both available. 2004. Part B, number, what number is it? Two or three? Two. Two, two part B. At time t equals zero, two particles P and Q are set in motion. Q has a position vector 20i plus 40j. So you don't tend to see this phrase too often. And as a result, if you haven't seen it before, it can throw you out, in which case you can end up not doing the whole question because of that little phrase. All it's telling you is where Q is relative to P. So you've got to be familiar with what are these concepts of vectors of holiday things. Sometimes we're so familiar with dealing with 4i minus 3j, we know, what, we know how to deal with it that we never take a step back to ask ourselves what does it actually mean. So if we have q has a position vector 20i plus 40j relative to p, let's draw my axis. If I put p here, now q has a position vector 20i plus 40j. So however far I go out in the i direction, I should go up how far? Double it. So 20i plus 40j is, if I say I'm going out 20 meters in the i direction, up 40 meters there, and that's where q is. So all you're really being told is q is up there, p is down here. I know I went down 20, I get rid of this diagram later on because it's going to get confusing, and I know I went up 40. So if I need to, I can work out that distance there. In fact, let's do it very quickly. p, q, how will I work it out? Pythagoras, the square root of 20 squared plus 40 squared, which equals to what? Uh, 20 root 5. 20 root 5 root 5. The second thing I would probably need, and quite often I would do this almost automatically without even worrying about whether I need to do it or not, would be to work out what? The angle. Okay. Almost probably, it's unusual that you wouldn't, but just in case, to work out this angle here, theta, how will I work out theta? Because it's an adjacent and an opposite, so theta is the inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent. 40 over 20, so it's the inverse tan of 2, which is... Yeah. 63.43 degrees. So that's all the information I know straight away. Okay? That's without even looking at the rest of the question. And it's, I obviously should have looked at all the questions to determine whether or not I'm going to tackle this question. But once you have that done, once you've decided you're tackling this question, as you go down along, you read, reread, and reread again each sentence. Because if there's a piece of information in there that you haven't seen, then Invariably, you won't be able to do the question. You need every single piece of information that it gives you. <coughs> Two parallels, P and Q, set in motion, T equals zero, Q is a position vector. So that's all it's told me so far. So I know I can get rid of that first paragraph, that first sentence, I don't need it anymore. P is a constant velocity of 3i plus 5j. Write it down straight away. Vp equals 3i plus 5j. Why am I putting that little arrow on top? Not so much it's a like I, not so much it's a velocity, although it is in this case, but in general it is a vector. A vector. So to show that it's a vector, okay. Um, and q is a constant velocity for i minus three g. Velocity of q is equal to four i minus minus three g. And on the little hats to show that they're vectors. Find the velocity of q relative to p. Well, you can do that straight away. The velocity of q relative to p is that vp or vpq? Vpq. The velocity of t. If I write down vpq, it's the velocity of p relative to q. Double back to make sure. Is that what I've asked me? No. Find the velocity of q relative to p. Is that right? No. I'm looking for vq p. Anyone can make a simple mistake. Um, but you, the thing is, you've always got to go back and double check. VQP, so it's the velocity of Q minus the velocity of P, so I can do this almost in my head. So it's VQ minus VP. So what's it going to be in the I direction? One. So it's 4I minus 3I. So it's I. Q 
minus that, so minus 3j minus plus 5j is minus 8j. That is the velocity of q as p sees it. So am I, I'm one of these two guys, and I'm looking at the other guy. Am I p looking at q, or am I q looking at p? It's the velocity of q as p sees it. So it's the velocity of q, if I want to be p, it's the velocity of q as I see it. So the velocity, so I'm here. That's me. As I see Q, he is traveling in plus or minus in the other direction. Plus. Okay. So he's going to the right or left? Right. right. Slightly to the right and up or down? Down. Down. Okay, so at this stage I can get rid of this little 40 and 20. I don't need it. I know he's going a little bit in that direction and a lot there, so he's going down here somewhere. That is VP Q. What generally will I always need to find out about VPQ? That's VQ there. VQ, my apologies. Anyone could make that mistake. <laughs> what are the two things I always need to find out about this? Um, direct, direct. Angle and the magnitude. Angle magnitude. and magnitude. So magnitude is given this symbol here. What did I say those two lines are called? What? Modulus. Modulus, which in turn will give us if which will just give us a single number. How will I work it out? Square root of square root of yeah, one yeah. squared plus your minus eight to be pedantic about it. Squared equals what? Eight point zero six. 8 times 0, 6. Does it give us units? Meters, it's telling us meters, and it's telling us meters per second. So strictly speaking, that would be meters per second. Notice the way that uses, am I right there? Yeah, that uses terminology m slash s. The more conventional terminology is what? M s minus 1. Yeah, so it's unusual. It's, that would now be the modern way of doing it. Applied maths may be stuck in their own world just somewhere. <laughs> Velocity of Q relative to P, we've got that. So the two things we said we needed. We said we would always need the magnitude, and the other thing you will need would be what? The angle. The angle. So we've already got theta used up, so it doesn't, or what we get here won't be theta, it's what do we call it? Theta. Theta or, if we're using the exact, are we using the exact marking scheme? No, we've already done the problem. Why wouldn't we call it X? Because that's Kind of like, because X is usually used for the short distance. Yeah, X is usually a distance. So it's normally alpha, beta, gamma, theta, or something like that. So we've got theta gone, so we'll go with alpha. Alpha is, how do we cover alpha is? N minus 1 of okay. the J over the I, yeah. 8 over 1. And what did that going to give me? 82.87 degrees. So now we've got to be careful, and this is where this question gets tricky. You've just got to be careful with where that angle fits into our diagram. So that is, and you come all the way back here, that's the velocity of Q as P sees it. So as P sees what Q does... Hmm? Is it the one across from... If you make a horizontal that goes through Q... Yeah, I'm, yeah. The, sh yes, the short answer is I don't know, but to help me, it would be very helpful if I started off with that and get to the If I did yeah, horizontal and even a vertical maybe, like that. Because, because we started off with I's and J's, this is with respect to a vertical and a horizontal. So I say, well, okay, where is my vertical and, hori and horizontal? So I stick it in here and say, now can I see what's happening? As P sees it, Q went a little bit in the I direction and down a lot in the J direction. So what angle are we going to be corresponding? Does that correspond to? One, one between the horizontal and, and one between the bottom horizontal right. and uh, the uh, far right. The, the bottom right one. The yeah. Bottom, yeah, bottom this right. guy here. Yeah. 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 So if I call no. that what name did I give it? Alpha. 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 So that's where it fits into my diagram. And unless you have any for the axis there. No, I think it's oh, the oh, alpha is outside that one because alpha is outside it. Oh yeah, it was a little bit over and a lot down. Can I just say it once again? This guy here, because yeah. it was a little bit over and a lot down. So that's the answer. So that's the door. So we still don't know. And again, you're going to do all of that very quickly. Right? All of these steps can be done very quickly. I'm teasing them out, making mistakes as I go on the back. I know that angle. I know what my theta is. And we're still looking for the question, the shortest distance between P and Q. 